The following video is not intended to take the place of on-field instruction. We simply want to be able to give direction to those interested in becoming volunteer umpires and to help make that role less intimidating from the start, as well as offer a refresher course for all. Twenty to thirty minutes before the start of your game. Make sure that your shoes are polished and your pants and shirt are pressed and clean. If you look the part, you'll have an easier time gaining the respect from all that you deserve. The plate umpire always picks the color of the shirts, usually depending on the color of the teams that are scheduled to play that particular game. Both umpires will gear up in the parking lot. The rule book states that the plate umpire will wear a cup, and most will have the dangling throw protector on their masks. After talking about the coverages and mechanics for the game, they will walk to the field together. Both umpires enter the field together. The field umpire will break off and begin checking the gear for both dugouts. While some teams will have their gear ready and outside the dugout for this process, other teams may have to be reminded. All bats are checked for safety and dents, as well as being legal for this division of play. In Southwest, all bats that have been checked and deemed legal will have white tape affixed just above the handle for easy and quick identification for legality. The bats will still be checked for cracks or dents. Helmets are checked for cracks and any safety issues. Cracked helmets are removed from the dugouts as they're all illegal bats. The plate umpire finds both managers, gets their lineups and pitching records, and verifies the same. Checking for eligibility of pitchers and ensuring that all players listed on the lineup are present. Plate umpire will identify the scorekeeper and the pitch counter for future reference and verify all lineups with the scorekeeper before the game begins. After the pledge, the home team will take the field and the umpires and managers will have a plate conference. After the conference, the plate umpire tells the catcher to bring the balls in. He then announces that he is ready for a batter and base coaches. Once the batter takes his position in the batter's box, the plate umpire makes eye contact with the field umpire. Both umpires are checking the dugouts for the correct number of adults as well as any open fences and assuring that both base coaches are in place. The field umpire will signal to the plate umpire that all is ready and good to go. Plate umpire acknowledges the field umpire, points to the pitcher, and announces play ball. Both umpires will check to make sure that the catcher is properly equipped with a dangling throw protector at every level of play and a flap on his chest protector at matrix and below. The plate umpire defines the slot as the place behind the catcher. Strikes are called with the right hand extended only. Balls are signaled only verbally. The closer the pitch, the louder the call. Try to show the count to the pitcher and announce verbally at least every other pitch at the majors and below, and every time there are two strikes or three balls where the batter and or pitcher are in peril. On a swinging strike, never make a dramatic call of strike three. Everyone saw the batter strike out. Simply call strike three softly and let him return to the dugout. On ball four, never point towards first base. The play umpire needs to always be certain that he stays out of the way of the catch when pass balls occur. If the pitcher is going to miss to your right, swing your right leg out to allow the catcher to pass by you with greater ease. The same process to the left as well. The single biggest thing to remember is to get out of the way and let the catcher do his job. On a play at the plate, you'll notice the plate umpire always has his mask in his hand. When making the call, find the ball first. Nothing is more embarrassing than calling runner out only to find the ball laying on the ground when the dust settles. Always check the position of the catcher to make certain they are not blocking the base path. The catcher can block the path if he is in possession of the ball, but not until then. Find the ball, look for the tag, and make the call. After the play is over and you have checked the rest of the field for any other action, call time. Clean the plate and prepare for the next batter.
the field umpire will always take their place in the shallow right field in between innings. This is the only time we ever allow them to have their hands in their pockets or their arms folded. When the plate umpire instructs the catcher to ask for balls in, the field umpire will take his position along the first base foul line, completely in foul territory, about 10 feet behind first base. This is known as the A position. The field umpire will always be in A position when there are no base runners on. If a ground ball is hit to an infielder, the umpire moves from foul territory into fair territory at about a 60 degree angle to first base so that he can see the base runner's foot touch the base as well as the first baseman catch the ball, all the while being prepared for a possible overthrow from an infielder. From this same position, the field umpire will also be able to see that the first baseman keeps his foot on the bag throughout the entire play. If the player does release his foot too early, called a pulled foot, the umpire will signal safe and throw both hands out to one side to signal to all that the player pulled his foot off the bag. There are no base runners on. The field umpire is in A position. The batter hits a line drive to the outfield. The field umpire comes into the work area around first base and watches the batter base runner touch the first base. He also looks to make sure that there are no obstructions by the first baseman. He watches the runner the entire time and hustles towards second base, staying in the work area, to make the call at second base. From the work area, this umpire can get to all three bases quickly and ahead of all runners. Runner on first base only. Field umpire is now in B position. On all ground balls to the infield, the umpire will hold his ground, perhaps taking a step or two closer to the base where the play is being made to make the call. He needs to make certain that he stays out of the way of a batted ball or a throw. When the ball is hit to the outfield, the field umpire will get to the work area as quickly as possible, avoiding the runner coming from first base, to make calls at all bases. He still has the responsibility of watching both the runner from first touching second base, as well as the batter base runner touching first base still looking for obstruction if and when it should occur. With a runner or runners on any bases, with the exception of a runner on first base only, the field umpire takes his position in between the shortstop and the third baseman. This is known as the C position. The mechanics are basically the same as if he were in B position. He calls all infield plays from where he started, and on all outfield hits, he gets to the work area as quickly as possible make it certain to avoid the base runner going to third base as well as both the fielders. The field umpire is responsible for calls at all three bases in the infield in this scenario. He is also responsible for all the base runners touching their next bases. When umpiring in the field of a 90 foot diamond, the A position remains the same. The B position is somewhere between the pitcher and second base, usually on the grass, on the first base side of the diamond. This umpire is responsible for plays at all infield bases, as well as all pickoff attempts at all bases. The field umpire is in the B position with a runner on first base only. The C position is in the same position, only on the third base side of the diamond. The field umpire assumes this position when runners are on base in any positions other than first base only. We spoke earlier in the video about looking the part. Uniform pressed, shoes shined, both umpires in the same color shirts. These things will bring you a degree of respect in and of themselves. However, alone they mean little. You must carry yourself with respect and treat others as you wish to be treated in order to expect that same level of respect to be returned to you. Never raise your voice in conversation with the manager and never engage in conversation of any kind except polite chit chat with fans outside of the fences. Do not respond or acknowledge hecklers. Simply have a conversation with the manager of the offenders and let him know that the behavior is unacceptable. While this league holds its managers, coaches, and parents to a very high expectation of behavior, our umpires are held to an even higher standard. Be professional and courteous at all times. It is never your job to take care of problem volunteers. The board will handle those situations as they arise. Thanks for stepping up and volunteering. You help make a lasting impact on both the kids and the parents of this great league.